So in this video, we've been asked to look into the reason why people cut vents into the bodywork of the car, what the performance advantages are. A lot of people are just of the understanding that these are purely aesthetic, but we're going to look at some of the performance benefits you get when there are vents in the bodywork of your car. Before you take an angle grinder to the paintwork of your car, there's a few things you need to bear in mind. We're going to look at some manufacturers that have fitted vents as standard on their car models and why they've done that and things that we can learn from this setup. So some cars come from the factory with very aggressive looking vents cut in the bonnet. So straight away, the Mitsubishi Evo and the Subaru Impreza spring to mind. With the Impreza, you've got the top mounted intercooler because it's a boxer engine. There's a lot of space in the engine area above the engine or certainly compared to a conventional four cylinder. So they've mounted the intercooler quite high up. So that vent or scoop is designed to get the air channeling in to go through that intercooler and to take those intake temperatures down. So that that is certainly there for performance benefits. The Mitsubishi Evo, the engines run quite hot. The vent is cut directly over the radiator, the hot part of the engine, the exhaust section. So the underbonnet temperatures can be lower. So with a performance car, you really want to be keeping those underbonnet temperatures as low as possible because that's going to rob you of performance. Reliability will suffer. Your engine oil will be doing a lot more work to keep the car lubricated at those higher temperatures. And the intake temperatures will generally Generally be a lot higher if you've got high underbonnet temperatures. So reducing those temperatures is certainly one of the priorities and probably one of the primary reasons why people cut vents into the front of their car. So some things to look out for when you start doing this is to just make sure that water is not going to start falling onto electrical components in the engine. I have seen some setups where people have cut vents directly over fuse boxes or over electrical parts of the engine and they've had all manner of problems when the damp has started to ingress. So you might even get through the summer months without having any problem at all. But as soon as you hit winter, which is, let's face it, the worst time of year to be fixing a problem, the water is starting to run into the engine bay and causing all manner of problems that need to be addressed. So think carefully about where you site it. So typically around the air intake, you will want some kind of vent to channel cold air in. It's very important though, to make sure you're not sucking water into the engine. That's gonna cause a lot of problems. You can seriously damage an engine when you start sucking water into it because water doesn't compress anywhere near as well as air. So you need to make sure you're not cutting any of the strength or the supports from the hood or the bonnet of your car. So if you look carefully, you'll notice that it's not just the skin, there's a framework that creates a more rigid structure. So you really don't want to be cutting into that because that's going to reduce the strength of that part of the car and you're gonna run into other issues and problems further down the line. So some people would go for an aftermarket one. Now I've seen nice carbon fiber setups. There's also some fiberglass setups. Now both of those generally are lighter than what the manufacturer will fit. So straight away, there's a bit of a performance advantage to just swapping out that part for a lighter part. But often the manufacturer ones have got loads of sound deadening and they really do muffle the sound of the engine and the road noise. So you may well start to create an environment in the car that's more noisy compared to the factory setup if you've done that. And even just cutting vents in, you may allow sound to escape from the engine bay that wouldn't have escaped before. And you certainly start to notice that. But for most drivers, that's probably going to enhance the driving experience. Most people love to hear the sound of their engine, unless you're driving an EV, in which case you won't really be looking at this video because it's not an important issue for you. Other areas that people cut vents into is generally around the wheels, they may allow the brakes to cool more effectively. They might channel hot air from the engine bay out the sides of the car. And as a car moves through the air, you've got a boundary layer where the low pressure area meets the high pressure area. And that can, in a lot of cases, create a suction or a vacuum. And that vacuum can actually help to move air through the engine of the car. So that will further enhance the radiator's ability to keep the car cool. It can also affect the aerodynamic stability of the car as well because you've got the air going a different path almost through the engine. 
up over the front windshield rather than just going directly over the front of the car on the windshield. But aerodynamic enhancements is not really a major consideration with event. I just flag it up really because it is a consideration for some drivers, particularly in the motorist sport arena where you're really trying to push it to the absolute max. So I hope this video has just given you a little bit of an insight into vents, why people have them, why you might want to think about fitting a vent to your car and just giving you a few things to look out for. So please boot that like button because that really helps helps us to get out there. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. We'd love you to stay tuned. And thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you in this next video that I've lined up. Thanks.